Hey everyone, Ivy League Gaming here, and today we're playing Dragonair Silent Gods. For today's video, we're going to head back into Temporal Vortex, and I'm going to showcase how strong one of the best epics in the game really can be. But before I get into that, we need to talk about the D&D collaboration event. Starting February 23rd, you can now summon Elminster Omar from the Planner Summoning. He's a new hero of the fire element, the Sage of Shadowdow. Before, we had Dristo Erden, who I absolutely love. This time, we also get an exclusive artifact, which is perfect for Elminster, as well as other heroes. There's even a new boss to fight, Samaster. This enemy is going to come with a multi-stage set of battles for even richer content. Really cool graphics for this one as well. There's also some other new monsters like the Draco Lich and the Stone Golem. There's also new dice skins. I love the ones from last seasons and these ones look great as well. They never disappoint with the graphics. There's also the Sage Baggage, which is a special pack you can purchase that gives you an avatar frame. There's new maps, new storylines, and so much to explore. Join the D&D legends in the Dragon Air world. Be sure to download via Android, iOS, Mac, PC, Steam, or Epic Games. And also be sure to use my promo code DRAGON0223. So I've been using Dauntless for the past week or so with the special boost that's happening with Vortex. And it is my unkillable team. Yeah, it's, it's not exactly the most... Um, Free to play friendly team out there but what i really want to showcase is in this team of legendaries it's actually the epic that shines the most i just recently got shelter one of my very few missing epics from a starlight die and my goodness is he impressive he's the mvp he's the big dps and it's pretty cool to see the way that this team works together he does have this unique um ultimate here that's kind of like in the vein of a flora where he goes and then everyone else's attacks actually improve his damage overall and it's all about this lightning strike with blessings of thunder yada 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 here and this extra derivative damage that can be dealt and i was really shocked to see the comparison because theraval has kind of been my main man here he's been a beast whenever i do dauntless content and he can definitely hang as a single dps in other areas of the game as well but i did not expect to get the damage out of shelter that i did i was really really impressed so i want to showcase this run we're going to talk a little bit about the game um some more candid honest thoughts that I, I quickly show um, in this live stream as well. And yeah, and then I do a little comparison with taking out um, Sutha for someone else. So I'm gonna let that footage roll and showcase this team. But guys, don't sleep on Shalter. If you have some of the great Dauntless heroes in hell, even if you don't have the fancy legendaries, you might be surprised at how good a Dauntless team can really be. So Temporal Vortex. Temporal Vortex here. Um, I'm doing pretty well with the rankings because this one is like where the Ice Blast does not shine. This is our Dauntless people's time to shine, our, our unkillable team. So I actually got 48. I was doing a lot worse. Not bad. I'll take 48. I've been in the 40s. Actually, I was 30. I thought I was higher than that one of the days. I was. I did 78, 79 million or something my highest day so far. But right now, this current rotation that on this server at the moment is boss takes 30% more lightning damage. And shields granted by allies are increased by 75% and healing is reduced by 25%. So for me, this doesn't matter with the unkillable team. So we have our unkillable Dauntless getting a chance to shine again. But now I have someone new to add to the party. I have Shelter. So we have to let Shelter shine. 
Guys, Shelter's a monster. It's been really fun. So, I'll show you guys what we're working with. We have an unkillable team here. Let me just do the quick one first. I, I have Zephy and Ogok as the unkillable team, as we know. They're the, they're the enablers. They make it happen. Ogok is in the horn just to give whatever extra damage we possibly can to the team when he happens to heal. Even though it's not as often as some others that are more ideal for the horn. That's what we got. I have the Dawn Pipe Organ to enable some damage out of my um, Theraval, who was my... Who was, is my main DPS, but barely, because Shelter's a monster. Literally, he's a minotaur, guys. He's a monster. Um, Zephy is with as much attack as possible, which is why she's in a broken set, just to get the extra attack bonus. Literally, that's all I care about, as much attack as possible to make this Dawn Pipe Organ be as impactful as possible, because it's 10% of the wearer's attack. Uh, and then Ogok is in... Cyril sec because they're the only one placing any debuffs, so it's what we got. And I definitely wasn't going to try to hurt Sutha even more. Sutha's our witch's remains because she hit so many times. But she's still with as much damage as I could get out of her. Although, to be fair, I have had some new gear pieces. It might be worth a look to see if I could change their gear, but we're going to leave it for now. We have Gambler on Theraval, which I did better with than I did Inventor, personally. Um, so I'm leaving that still. I've I've had a lot and I have better roles. Like my my gambler gear is so much better than my inventor gear, so that alone makes a difference, I'm sure. And he is in the um goblet. Again, Sutha, which is remains, and she's she's an inventor for me. Um, but it's it's fine. It kinda she's kind of got my inventor, which has a lot of accuracy roles. Or accuracy. Yeah, there we go. I was like, I was, had a few accuracy rolls here somewhere, I swear. But I still tried to give her as much damage as possible. And then Enlightenment fully focused on Shelter with the Vile Ink has been a ton of fun. Um, I'm really surprised by them. So our timings are set here with 14.5 and 26 seconds initial for our unkillable. And then I have it set to where Shelter goes first with his ultimate because he enhances all allies first with the blessings of thunder. So he gives a bit of a buff. Then I let uh, Sutha go with her multi-hits, which hit pretty hard. She's a beast. She tr Even with Witch's Remains, she does pretty good. But then, yeah, she places her defense penalty and um, Theraval boosts himself and then does a bunch of extra shots. And all his basic attacks do more damage and all that fun stuff. So I kind of have everyone in a 20 second rotation here. And it does pretty good. I was really surprised. I have no fancy buffs, which is really sad though. But oh, but here is our stats. Um, again, full focus on enlightenment for Shalter. And of course, everyone's fully booked. Not insane crit rate, crit damage, but pretty good. Um, this adds the extra crit rate, so I do go a little lower here. Um, Sutha, I have close to 100% because I want her basic attacks to do damage too, not just her skills. Her skills might allow for an extra 20%, um, or 30% chance at a critical hit. But that's only the skill itself, not her basic attacks, which she actually is going to do pretty good with overall. So I prefer to go higher. And that was a recommendation I was given before from my guildmates, and it seems to be doing pretty good. Uh, Zephy again, crazy attacks. So we have, well, not crazy, but pretty darn solid. Over 6,000 attack on Zephy. I think at one point I had 7,000 attack on her. But that's just to make as... So this is giving Theraval at least um, 600 plus attack. So that's quite a lot as well. And then Ogok is just here to mostly do this. <laughs> and to land accurate attack penalty even though he doesn't need to for unkillable. Because he's in a surreal set. 
that's kind of a bummer that I have to even give him any accuracy because it doesn't seem like he would need it, right? Yeah, there we go. There's the unkillable team, guys. Let's go back to two times speed. We don't want one times. But what's fun for me with this team is seeing how much damage that sh uh, Shelter ends up doing. It's quite impressive. That's true. Maybe given this team, because I have the organ, Nimbus could be better than Sutha. Because Nimbus would be the same role of the Witch's Remains. That's definitely worth a test. Sutha's a beast, though. She's so She still is great damage even with Witches. But it wouldn't be a bad idea to try. Just because of, yeah, using the pipe organ. It's a lot of attack to give them, right? I mean, 600 attack, just be like, here you go. Do more damage. So, of course, Sutha ends up being the lowest because, again, she's in the one artifact that has nothing to do with damage. N Nimbus was never a slacker in your Evelios team. He would only be like 10 to 15% less damage. Nice. Yeah, you have a Velios um, and Shalter in your same team, right? That was interesting. And my music disappeared. Where'd you go, music? There we go. Yeah, look at Shalter doing more damage than my Theraval for some of the... It's crazy. I think he actually does. <laughs> oh man well I'm so happy to have shelter I couldn't believe the difference of adding him in so you know what I'll do is I'm gonna play this run out while we're here live on twitch I will finish the run and then cut raid somebody and then after I'm done with this run I'll go put in Nimbus and do the same run in the same idea. Nimbus in the role of Sutha to be the Witch's Remains, plus obviously some damage. As much damage as possible. And then I will add that result to the YouTube video. So I'll make a YouTube for the Unkillable team, the updated one with this buff. And having Shelter as part of the team. And we'll add in... We'll add in Nimbus. Why not? It, it makes it more free-to-play friendly-ish. Oh god, could Zephy unkillable free-to-play friendly? You know, no big deal. Um, But we'd have two epics! <laughs> that makes it free-to-play friendly, right? We're only using all legendary artifact. Wait, no, we're using one epic artifact. <laughs> we're not trying to be free to play friendly. We're just having fun. Who do I recommend as the first epic from the epic selection chest? I actually have a video where I joined Jay Giggs talking about that topic. Yep, yeah, Jay Giggs fully admits he's a complete noob with this game, so I joined him to talk about the epics on his channel. And he, jo he joined me for a video on my channel as well. We'll have posted eventually. Now, he's only played a little bit, honestly. He's definitely not played a lot. He, re he likes the game, though. He definitely seems to actually like it. You know, there's actually real competition for the evil game we all came from, you know? This game was one of the biggest, I think, as far as... I think this game has the best graphics out of all of the gotchas I've played. Period. I don't... It's... Like, look at this boss. It's gorgeous. Like, how... It's, it's stunning. Like, in the visuals of the heroes just going through the screen, like, uh, all the, the hero... 
um, info screens, I guess. Like, it's insane. You converted from Dragonair from the evil game, but it has nothing to do with the graphics. I mean, the graphics for me, for Dragonair, Jay, um, that's what drew, drew, uh, drew me in. Was like, this game looks beautiful. That's what caught my attention. So I've been playing Dragonair since March of last year, guys. It's been a long time. And I wanted to... I've always had it in the back of my head. Especially when I would hear content creators like Hell Hades or Deadwood Jedi mention something um, about like Dungeons and Dragons, especially Deadwood. I was like, oh, there's a game coming that has that vibe. Like, you, you're going to want to play it. And of course, now we have the Elminster collab, the Driss collab and all that too. That's really fun. But... I think I always was, and it was always in my mind back since June of a year and a half ago when they first messaged me and I was like, I don't have time. I'm sorry to check out your game, but maybe in the future. And then come March, I saw it again. And actually come February, I saw it. March, I started playing again. So my journey's been a long one with Dragonair. That's how I feel, Jade, full time. I feel like... This game, I want to have open. I want to be grinding and improving my Vortex team. I want to try min-maxing and having fun where sometimes, most games, it feels more like a chore. But this is the game I want to be, like, experimenting with. Now, as we were talking about with the Mecha Torque, I wish they brought that process a little bit, like, slower. So I don't have to, boom, make six teams instantly in one day. Um, for a whole new boss with whole new mechanics. But, at the end of the day, like, this, this is definitely the game that I've had the most enjoyment out of diving deeper in and really testing my account and trying characters, pushing to min-max. I'm not always someone who cares about min-maxing, honestly. I really don't. Like, I'll be like, get good enough to get whatever reward and I'm happy. Usually. But this game, I want to min-max a lot more. Uh, Alright, but yeah, that's my... That's my little team here. It's doing pretty good. I really like my team. And I can't believe, guys, Shalter is the main DPS, by the way. Just saying. Shalter over Theraval. It's crazy. Oh, I just saved it. I was gonna test. I will do a run with Nimbus in the not counting mode.
And if you haven't already, be sure to download Dragon or Silent Gods now using the link in the description or the pinned comment. It's available on Android, iOS, Mac, PC, Steam, and Epic Games.